And we are live. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this work session of ISD 834 School Board. We are going to be discussing um, potential um, uh, levy information and potential bond information for this coming fall. And we have a presentation. And so I will turn it over to Superintendent Lansfeld. Thank you, Chair Petrie and fellow um, board members. We are excited tonight to bring more information to you regarding our considerations for an upcoming referendum uh, this November. And I will go ahead and let Carissa bring up the slide show. Thank you. And we'll go to the next slide. So the purpose of tonight's discussion with our school board is to recommend items to test in a community survey to learn more about referendum options or impacts with our Ellers team that I'll introduce in just a moment, to consider levy and bond requests with our administrative team um, priorities, to review community and administrative priorities, and to discuss the school board priorities from the last work session, and then determine next steps. So our community engagement firm is Baker Tilly, and we are specifically working with Don Lifto with the company. And they are going to provide a random sample phone survey to test the community threshold or attitude toward a 2021 referendum. The survey will be 40 questions to test what could be added to a referendum request when it goes over 40. Um, it's diluted and they don't have as um, accurate data as they would like, so they do limit it to 40 questions. And we want to test um, the feasibility of the operating levy renewal, a possible operating levy increase, capital projects, um, tech levy. We know how important that has been this year uh, with COVID and a possible bond for some of our space needs within our district. So this information can be used to help determine the number of questions well, on a ballot, um, the dollar amount, the ballot language, and the overall messaging for a referendum. So this is critical information. Easy. We do want to send out again the survey in February um, and then get the information back to present to our school board and community. So with this, I would like to turn the next few slides over to our Ellers group. Uh, we have three representatives tonight and they will be providing some high level, we want to stay high level here, um, information uh, regarding the finances. They're our municipal services group. So with that, Jody, I will let you start off by um, introducing you and your team. Thank you, Melinda, and thank you so much to the board for approving us as your municipal advisors. We are very excited to serve the district once again. We had worked with Stillwater Schools starting in 1960 for about 45 years. So are really, really thrilled about the opportunity to be engaged with you and your community once again. So just briefly, we're going to have about 10 minutes, I think, to cover our section of the presentation for today. So just we'll give brief introductions. Um, again, my name is Jody, and I have been at Ellers for about 11 years, and prior to that, I worked at South Washington County Schools as the Director of Finance for 15 years. So next, I will introduce Greg Crow, who is the principal of our education team. And Greg, if you just want to quickly say... Hi, everyone. Nice to be here with you. Um, as Jody mentioned, I'm the principal of our education group, and i um, been at Ellers for about eight years. Prior to that, I spent nearly 20 years with the state legislature. Uh, mostly writing school funding formulas and, and anything related to, to school finance in the nonpartisan budget office. So, and I'm too I'm very excited to, uh, to work with the district and help you find some solutions and move forward. And next, and then, Matthew Hammer. Hi, um, my name is Matthew Hammer. Um, I'm the third member of the team working with Stillwater Schools. Uh, I've spent about 15 years in education in Minnesota. Um, with uh, 10 um, being at Fridley Public Schools as the Director of Finance and Operations prior to coming to Ellers in 2018. So uh, happy to be here and um, we'll let Jody get started here. Thanks, Matthew. So the first slide that you see here is just a list of the available financing tools for school districts. And we think this is a nice resource for 
all of our districts just to take a look at the different types of projects that you're trying to finance or revenue that you're trying to access with some um, additional information related to each of those tools. You'll see those first few items are circled there because those are the items that are included as part of the survey. So I will move on to the next. So the first item that you are um, taking a look at as part of your survey is your operating referendum because it's expiring. We'll give you a few details about it and we wanna save some time to get to some bigger picture stuff. But this just gives background information about an operating referendum. And um, a couple of things to point out here is that um, you need to hold an operating referendum as part of a November election ballot. So there are four other times during a school year or during a, a calendar year when districts can provide, can present other referendum questions to their voters, but a operating referendum does have to be included on the November election ballot. And um, the state calculates a cap on the revenue that you can access. And um, at this point in time, the cap is at a little over $1,800 per, per pupil for fiscal year 21-22. The other thing to point out here is that it is an annual levy that you access and the maximum length that you can ask your voters to approve the levy is 10 years. So then the next slide. So this, the current operating referendum for Stillwater, as most of you know, was approved by the voters in 2013. It was an eight year term. We do see most districts asking for the full 10 year term, but Stillwater requested an eight year term at that point in time. It includes an annual inflationary adjustment that's based upon statutory inflation factors. So we get asked that quite commonly. So when there's an inflation factor approved by the voters, who decides that inflation factor? And the state decides that. Your authority is expiring after fiscal year 21-22. So as you know, November election next year will be your um, opportunity to renew that. And uh, your level right now for funding is just under $13. $1,300 per pupil for the current fiscal year and generates about $11.4 million. So the only opportunity you have to renew, and I think everyone's aware of this, is in the November of 2021 election. The estimated renewal amount, because it would um, be inflated for um, the final year that it's in place, will be $1,297.45. And that gets updated by the state each year because those inflationary factors are estimates and they change those on an uh, annual basis. Um, so, they, so we'll know what that specific dollar amount is next summer. Um, for a renewal, the estimated tax imp impact is gonna be very close to zero or maybe just a small rounding dollar amount um, as you're just extending an, author an authority that's scheduled to expire. So you could, because you saw what the cap was in place for the state, you could request additional authority. And I think that's one of the um, questions that you're planning to survey. You are able to access about $530 more per student to get to that cap. And that would give you about 4.7 to $5 million more of revenue. The estimated tax impact would be slightly under $14 per month or about $165 per year on a residential home at a $350,000 level, which is about the average district-wide. We know it varies a little bit community to community, but about the $350,000 home is the average overall for your district. And if you wanted to look at somewhere in between that renewal and the additional $530 per student, just know that the tax impact would be proportionate to the amount of revenue that you're adding. So this chart just demonstrates the reason why districts have been requesting additional voter approved funds, either through an operating referendum and or a capital project or technology levy. You'll see that um, top blue line there is um, uh, the general education formula allowance had it been adjusted for inflation. And the general education formula allowance provides the majority of funding that school districts get for their day-to-day -day operations. Um, that dotted line, the orange line down below, is what the actual general ed formula allowance is. And you'll see the difference between those two lines for um, fiscal year 21 is $503. So um, just kind of demonstrates the reason why districts are um, requesting additional funding from their voters. 
And now I'm gonna turn it over to Matthew to talk about the capital project levy. Matthew, I think you're on mute. Thank you. I was saying some really good things. <laughs> <laughs> so as jo thanks Jody, as one, uh, as, as, uh, as one of those levers that districts are using to make up that gap that Jody pointed out in the general fund revenue uh, was the operating levy. Another lever that districts are using across the state is the capital project levy. Um, and about uh, 53 districts statewide currently have a capital project levy in place with about 60% of uh, districts in the metro, seven county metro area having a one in place. And, Currently, Stillwater Schools does not have a capital projects levy uh, approved by voters, but this differs a little bit. Um, it still is a ballot question that are, is presented to voters, but instead of being based on pupil units or uh, pupils, it's actually based on a stated tax rate and will adjust up and down um, based on uh, property growth within the district. So as property values grow, uh, the capital project levy will grow along with it. And as pro property uh, values decline district-wide, they would, it would decline with it. Um, but in essence, what a capital project levy funds most often is uh, revenue for technology projects. Um, and most districts are utilizing it to fund technology, but it also can be used to uh, fund uh, capital projects as well. Um, when I was in Fridley, we, we utilized it not only for funding some of our technology, but we also had a capital project component that it funded. Um, again, it's, uh, it's uh, money that's collected uh, through property taxes. There's uh, typically no debt uh, issued, and the term is 10 years. Um, how this differs a little bit is it's spread on a different tax base. It's spread on the net tax capacity tax base, unlike an operating referendum that's spread on referendum market value. In a lot of districts, that that is more significant. Um, but in your district, there's a there's a pretty good balance across property uh, classifications. So the impact of a capital projects levy and an operating referendum is very similar. Um, um, and the district is currently not um, receiving any aid in the operating referendum formula. So it it'll be pretty much a, a one for one. Um, and the one thing to point out here is that. Uh, that is a little different is that that language in the operating referendum is very prescriptive um, when it goes out to voters on the ballot. Um, here with the capital projects levy, there's a little bit more flexibility in, in how the question is written and you can actually describe the types of things that would be funded uh, as part of the, the ballot question itself, which can be very helpful when you're, when you're going out to voters because oftentimes voters are interested in exactly what they're going to be uh, the funds are going to be utilized in the district. So this slide um, <clears throat> assumes uh, that there would be no other, uh, this, the capital projects levy sits on its own um, and there'd be no other levies that would be adjusted. So um, this just gives you an idea of a range between uh, 2,750,000 and 3,750,000 of what the tax impact would be for various property tax types or property classification types. And if we pick that $350,000 residential property, you can see that range is from about $80 annually to $108 annually. Um, assuming that this uh, capital projects levy would stand on its own and we wouldn't be looking at any other modifications or, or changes in the district's levy. <clears throat> and that's, a, that's an important point. And as we look at bond options, um, we, we wanna talk a little bit about how, uh, what you're doing right now on your levy could come into play to making things a little more advantageous uh, as you go to the voters to ask for additional revenue. So this slide is just some background as we talk um, you know, a little bit about bonds. We don't have as much detail on the bonds because um, Carl Anderson and um, others uh, in the district are kind of still thinking about what the scope of that project might be. Um, but generally you have some opportunity because your debt, uh, as you can see, is scheduled to decline in a few years and schools don't have to issue debt or pay, for, pay debt back the way you do a mortgage um, where you have level payments over the life of the, of the loan. Um, instead, 
in this case, for example, we could have some smaller payment at, payments at the beginning and larger payments after you've paid off your existing debt. So it's important to know that, you know, in the context of your full debt picture, you have some opportunity to issue bonds and, and we can help you mitigate the tax impact just through the structuring. But then the other piece of tax mitigation is the, is the good news slide. And um, what we're highlighting on here is, is really that, you know, the tax impact that Matthew just walked through, um, or alternatively, if you add it to the operating referendum instead of just um, um, reducing it, um, there are opportunities with your existing levies to help reduce those levies and mitigate some of those potential increases from a bond or capital project levy or additional operating referendum. We have a model that encompasses all of your capital levies, projects it out um, actually 30 or 40 years, depending on, on um, kind of the term of what we're looking at in, in terms of the bonds and, and uh, other tools that we can use. And um, uh, right now you're paying for all of your annual um, long-term facilities maintenance projects, which are deferred maintenance and health and safety projects identified in the 10-year plan that you send to the state. You're paying for all of those every year with a levy that's intended to finance that, that year's projects. And um, in doing so, you, um, you have a, a movement of the levy as your project changes and there's some in inconsistencies over time in the property tax levy. And um, one option you have is you're what's called an old oak facilities district. And that's a bunch of jargon, but what it means is there were mostly metro districts that were large in square footage with older buildings that were allowed into an old program called the alternative facilities program that allows you each year to levy as much as you want to finance your um, capital needs for deferred maintenance and health and safety. You are also permitted by statute in most of the districts, and we work with about two thirds of the metro district two thirds of the districts that qualify for that program. Most of those districts use a mix of, of um, bonding and uh, annual levies to finance those capital projects, basically in an effort to help really cash flow and manage the levy. And so, um, for example, if you decided to, to finance a few million dollars of those projects with a bond, you don't have that levy on the first year of your taxes. Um, and so your levy goes down, you're only basically paying the first bond payment. And so we can coordinate that with uh, your voter approved levies as you're going to the taxpayers and potentially offset all or, or uh, some of the increases that you might propose to the voters uh, on the capital project levy or, or a bond uh, referendum for, for other building projects. And so, you know, in that sense, you're, you're financing all the same projects with the same levy amount that the board sets and approves, um, but you're able to control the tax impact, mitigate it um, to make it, uh, you know, to, to, to help you tell the story about what else you need in the district without having a big uh, tax increase associated with it. So we think that's a very important tool and there's a, there's a lot of details to get into to understand that, but um, it's a great tool for you to use and we've had some preliminary discussions with the district and, and we think you can benefit from that as you as you plan your, your election this fall. So that's everything we had and I, I, went, I went a couple minutes over but I blame Matthew. Okay, thank you Jody, <laughs> Greg and Matthew, appreciate the information. Um, now I'm going to take you through some information on our levy and bond priorities. Just a quick reminder and I'll bring this up again and again. Um, levy is for learning. That means um, paying for what's happening in our classrooms, such as at textbooks, tubas, and technology, supporting our teachers, students, staff, possibly maintaining class size, strategic plans, social emotional learning. Again, levy is for learning. So back in October 2019, Morris Leatherman ran a community survey for us uh, regarding tax increase for improvements within our district. If you look at this um, graph, the dark green and light green show strong support and support for these items from our community. The red is um, for opposing them. But mainly we see a lot of green here when you combine them. And 
We have um, items such as the social emotional programs, reduction of class size, expand career pathways. It's mainly at our high school right now that offers more opportunities for all of our students. Enhancing safety and security, maintaining current programs. Uh, we did make 2.5 million in cuts a couple of years ago and we would like to um, keep the programs that we have. Expand science curriculum. We are just starting to do a science review this month within our district. Maintain class sizes, enhance classroom technology, update the technology infrastructure, interdistrict transportation. We are providing um, transportation for our gate students, but right now not our dual immersion um, Spanish program at Lake Hummel, so there are some opportunities there. And then changing the high school schedule, again, to offer more opportunities for all of our students. That's part of our um, equity plan to embed that into everything we do. So we had um, as many as seven, oh, if you can go back for just a second, um, as many as 77% of respondents would support a property tax increase for the purpose of expanding social emotional programs or maintaining current programs. So it, it's quite significant that um, we had a lot of support from our community. Thank you. So administrative priorities, we met as a leadership team and with um, other administrators within our district. With our levy renewal, we um, have a priority of supporting our existing programs and the portrait of a graduate initiatives, which ties right back into our world's best workforce and our strategic plan. And to ensure quality teaching and learning for all students. Each and every one of our students deserves that high quality instruction. If we um, wanted to ask for a possible levy increase, the priorities would be academic support or intervention for our students with the pandemic catch up. We know we have a lot of students that we need to support um, after this year. And safety and social um, emotional wellness, that's hugely important. Expanded career pathways, again at the high school, expanded academic opportunities, then that's changing the high school schedule and additional mental health support. Also during this year uh, with COVID and our pandemic, we have realized how important technology is for our students, families, and our um, teachers and other staff. With the survey that we just completed with Morris Leatherman, we do know that a lot of families would like to still have the option of an online um, learning program within our district, that's K through 12 and learning technology for preschool through uh, 12 plus, that includes our transition program, 18 through 21 year olds. And just a reminder that technology, a technology levy could free up general fund dollars. We know at least over a million in capital and then uh, more than that possibly in staffing and could provide additional funds for other student needs. And we will talk more about that in future meetings. So at this time, we would like to um, take a pause and we would, we're not making decisions, but we just want to have some type of um, consensus that the school board members are okay with us um, testing in our survey, some of these priorities that we've had. And the red items over on the left align with the community survey that was completed back in 2019 and our administrative priorities. The two that are in black, that came from our previous um, work session with the school board a couple of weeks ago. So we want to consider priorities of community and administration. Where is there agreement? And what, if any additional priorities, can the board reach consensus on testing? And I am wondering just if we could do a quick thumbs up if school board members are in consensus or agreement with us testing these items. Carissa, could you possibly bring it to um, uh, take down this PowerPoint and we can see all of our board members and we could just run through this. And Joan, I'm going to have you help me just take a tally if we could. Um, um, okay, if we are ready, if you could give me just a thumbs up if you are in consensus or agreement with us testing um, the threshold of the community supporting gaps in learning, that would be the intervention pandemic um, catch up. Joan, did you get a count on that? 
I'm showing six thumbs ups. Okay. And if we could have a show of thumbs up if you are in support of maintaining existing programs, testing that on our survey. Joan? Um, I'm not seeing, oh, there's Liz, I'm sorry. So I have, again, six thumbs up. Thank you. And if I could have a thumbs up on online learning, testing that. Could I just, I'm sorry, oh, if, yes. if she couldn't see me last time, I had my thumbs up for the previous question also. Thank you, Liz, yes. Thanks, John. Okay, so online learning, if you are in support of us testing that. Annie, is, are you a thumbs up? Okay, thank you. Were you a thumbs up on the last two? I'm sorry, then, then it would be seven on all of these. Okay. And testing pathways at the high school and a block schedule. We have seven. Okay. Or is Allison? Allison, did you have a question? I did. I did. Is the pathways in the block schedule, are those tied together? That was always my understanding is that they were, is that kind of under one? Carissa, do or you those two Yeah, I was just going to jump in. Um, on the survey, we could ask it as separate questions. I think when we have had conversations, we often say to really do what the, what the high right. school is intending with pathways, it probably would require a block schedule. But I think there are other things that they could do to expand the career pathways program without a block schedule. It's just a little bit more limiting. So right. we could test it the other way. I, th I think that when, I, when I'm talking to people in the community, it just seems like maybe a little bit more meet around like what do we mean when we're talking career pathways just so because I don't know if just the career pathways would sell itself in the way that it, if it would say what it would include um that's just my thought though but I don't know exactly how the questions will be written or whatever I just need to ask okay. thank you we will work with Don Lifto from Baker Tilly on these questions and he's done hundreds if not thousands of surveys and so he will um help us make the, the best structure to the survey. Okay, next item, reduce class size. If you would like to have that tested on the survey, a thumbs up. Joan, did you get that? Up seven, seven, yes. Okay, the next one, social emotional support. If you would like that tested on the survey, please provide a thumbs up. Seven, okay. Okay, technology. If you would like that tested. We have seven. Okay, and an immersion program, the immersion program, looking at that. If you would like that tested. I think Katie has a question. Yes, Katie. Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Do you mean expanding the immersion program? Do you mean continuing it? Like, can you just tell us a little bit more about what we're testing? Yes, that would be all of the above. We've looked at, um, it's been proposed by some board members. If you want to look at a possible different location, if you want to look at expansion, it's going to um, cost us money. It's um, all of the above. Um, I have a quick question. Okay, go ahead, Katie. Sorry, ahead. so is there a chance that we would, for some reason, not be continuing a Spanish immersion program? for any reason, or it's, but the, are you talking about a dual immersion program or are you talking about- Yes, and there's, there's that, that was a good question that was asked earlier today. It's a dual immersion program with Spanish as the language, but when we are marketing, we do call it Spanish immersion just to clarify um, for parents and, and it um, has a lot of interest in, in the immersion program. We are slowly growing it, but it does take a lot of extra staff and, and space too. Okay, so I have a quick question here. Um, so when we talk about expanding the immersion program, are we looking at strategically expanding it by including, uh, by looking at outcomes with respect to what we have right now, or we're trying to duplicate what we already have? Is that a kind of expansion we're talking about? Yes, we would like to grow it. Um, also, we don't provide things like transportation at this time for a lot of families and looking at equity, um, that would cost money too. 
Okay, so quick, sorry, so I, I don't mean to overflow. When you mean, when you say grow, what do you mean exactly? I'm just well, trying to get some clarity. We've had school board members that have wanted to um, possibly move it to another site for more room. Um, we've had school board members that have wanted to provide transportation for our students. Uh, Rachel, you're on here. If you have more information and details. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yep. Well, you're spot on, Melinda, um, and great questions. Right now, we're limited to two sections per grade level for our dual immersion program um, for Amigos Unidos. And we want to try to have a dual immersion program, but in some of our grade levels, it's the regular immersion program because we do not have the population for native speakers. Two reasons for not having the population for native speakers. One is not having transportation provided um, for some of the families across the district. The other is not being able to open um, enroll um, because the program fills up with our internal district students. Um, we don't have the option to open it up for enrollment outside the district, allowing us to get more native Spanish speakers in. And so Rachel, can I also ask, we've been looking at expanding it as well to the middle school. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, that is the plan. We will be offering programming through middle school. Next year, our program will be in fourth grade. So middle school um, will experience the programming when it comes through in sixth grade in two more academic years. So that will happen, but what that looks like will be determined by budget. Um, so the program expansion um, really does include, do we want more than two sections per grade level? What are our goals with that? And then how, um, how deep do we want to get in programming options as students matriculate up the system? Um, that can be a matter of having two classes at the middle school um, or more expanded opportunities um, to deepen their language acquisition skills. Okay, so we're not just looking at um, we're not just looking at growth. We're looking at expansion. We're looking at moving it to or moving it away from where it is right now to a different location. Is that what we're saying? Potentially, Potentially. not necessarily. Okay. So, uh, so Rachel, just a quick one here. What is wrong with the current location? I'm just trying to understand why this topic is, is, is also something. About. What's wrong with where it's at right now? Nothing is wrong with the current location. Um, it's a great location to have it within Lake Elmo Elementary because we have a large percentage of students and families who are native Spanish speakers. And so they compromise um, some of the membership of the program. The challenge is because of the size of the school, we can't expand um, because we still need to make sure we have the section sizes for the English language instruction cohorts that attend Lake Elmo. Um, and with that, that means we can only open it up to two sections each grade level. And so Lake yeah. Elmo has been um, losing a section of English language instruction so that the dual language can come in. Um, so it's a size issue. Okay. so. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to overflow this issue. You just, you made a very good point there by indicating that the size, the school, the size of the school. Uh, so personally, I'm thinking, this is my personal opinion now. Uh, maybe this is not the right time. We should focus more on things that are a bit more important, right? With respect to, you just talked about the school. And Lake Helmo has been one of the, one of the areas that we've talked about, like the building a new school, or whatever we need to do there. We talked about small class sizes. We all supported it. And if we don't have the space for that, we will not be able to have small class sizes. And Likemo is one place that has about 33 to 35 students to in a class to a teacher. So I think there are better things. We can move this particular topic. It's, it's important. I'm not saying it's not. But I think we can move this to maybe a couple of years from now, but really focus on where that money, it's really using the money, spending that money, it's something that is a bit more important. Um, if we talk about, uh, if we, it's important, whether we have dual, whether we have three Spanish immersion, whatever it is, it's important, but I don't think this is a time for it. That money should go towards something that we can truly use and expand in the schools or build new schools or whatever it is that we need to do. Uh, and this, this question is mainly, I would say, for growth of the program versus expansion yeah. of the program. And then the, the um, concern with the school size and the sections that will come more in the, the bond um, questions right. for the survey. Yeah. Right. To clarify, Dr. Porbini, our program will continue to grow through middle school mm -hmm. and up through secondary. It would just be, do we want more than two sections per grade level in the district? So you're accurate. 
It's okay. it will continue to expand up through secondary. Okay. So this would not impact that. All right. Director Thank Riley. You. Thank you. Director Riley. Thank you. I think it's important to um, remember that if we're going to be discussing any sort of expansion or building issues, we also need to have operational um, funding at that same time. We don't want to find ourselves in a predicament again. And so I think it, it is the appropriate time to have that conversation. Uh, Director Sherman. I want to I want to keep in mind that um, current family participants um, might look at something like this and just start to question the future of the program. And we did have that kind of survey that we did in a work session last year with current families. I I don't I don't not think that we I mean I just don't know what we're asking. And here's so here's part of the problem. One thing that and this is with any question: Are we putting a price tag on it so that voters can kind of like for example, we all say, let's talk about class size, but that's one of the most expensive things that we can be asking from voters to do, um, both from a facility and from a staffing co context. So are we gonna put class size, but then some sort of cost around it? Cause I think everyone's gonna say, oh yeah, lower class size, that sounds good. But if they see the cost, they might think twice or- Carissa, I'll let you jump in. Yeah. Um so that's a great question. In this particular survey, we're not testing cost. Um, we do have a contract with Baker Tilly that allows us to do a follow-up survey um, later this spring. So this initial survey is really just trying to test the waters and see if we have support for things. So it's going out to your community and saying, what are the things that, as the last survey showed us in, in 2019, what are the things that you're interested in? And we can get a look at that. It almost prioritizes some of those things for us. We can say, okay, the majority of people, 70 some percent, feel like this is something they could get behind. Let's talk more than as a board and as an admin about what that could actually look like and answer more of the specifics. And then you go out and test that yet again. So that's when you would have the price information. That's where you'd have maybe more of a flushed out plan. That's when you're really trying to figure out, this is what we're thinking for a ballot question. Is this going to pass? Um, so right now you're just testing waters kind of high level. What's the interest out there? And then the next step when we do have that information would also be to provide um, our community with the tax impact on the different priorities and the choices that we make. This is just high level right now um, to see what the community could support. Director Weisberg. Thank you. And I think the important part of this question was um, just like Rachel said, right now we can only have two sections per grade as we try to grow this immersion program. So if there are, if there is more interest in the district for families to have their students in this program, we really can't do it where it is um, at Lake Elmo because there's just not the space. So in addition to, do we want to build a new school? What do we want to do with Lake Elmo? This came up because at its current location, when we're adding a class each year, we're basically constraining um, Lake Elmo, the students that they can take for their neighborhood that don't wanna be in the program. And we're constraining the program because there's only sex, a space for two sections. And I just wanted to encourage everybody, the survey that Melinda mentioned um, to get the actual physical survey. There was a parent survey and an overall survey. And even though Melinda said that there was um, interest in what did they split out, what people did want to vote on. The question that was right before that on page seven says, are there any circumstances you would vote for a property tax increase? 89% said no. And this was prior to COVID. Um, and then I'll bring up some other things in it, but you might be a graph person where you can look at a graph and, and that's how your brain works. My brain works better if I actually read it. Um, and there's a lot more information in the actual question and answer of the survey. And it was done August, 2019. So I would encourage everybody to get a copy of the both surveys, the overall and the parent. Um, Director Sherman. During the 2019 survey, was the community offered and asked about immersion because I was looking through that survey that director Weisberg's um, had mentioned and 
I guess I'm just, I'm, I didn't, it wasn't on the list of what community members would support. So I don't know if they were just given a static list. And then also, I'm just wondering, is this, why are we doing kind of another general survey? If we had one from Morris Leatherman, maybe we could explain to the community. I mean, maybe it's COVID or um, maybe we just think that the atmosphere has just changed so significantly at this point that we need to go back out and kind of start over. But we do kind of have a little bit of information re related to what people are already interested in. So I guess I was expecting another survey might kind of go to a little bit more detail. Um, but I can answer the first part of your question, Allison. Um, the way that the survey was structured last time, there were um, questions they were given to respond to. So it wasn't really open-ended in that case. And those questions came from work that we had done with our community through the Portrait of Graduate and a lot of um, just community conversations. And we had heard what people were saying were important as well as feedback we had from our own staff. So that's where you saw that list and people kind of prioritized it for you. As far as um, why, I think you know, the board kind of had given some direction that for the ability to make decisions for the levy, they needed some some more information. Um, a lot has changed since 2019. You have a, a lot of changes in this district. I mean, if you think about even just leadership changes and all that's going on with COVID and, and the world around us. So it, it will be very interesting to see if that has changed perspectives. Um, and I think that's kind of what we're, we're trying to do this round is just see where we're at today. Uh, Director Weisberg. Thank you. And I was just looking through Allison and, and it doesn't specifically say um, the immersion program, but 25% said when, when it was the question, what would you vote, uh, what would you approve a property tax increase? 25% said enhanced programs. And then there was a question that said, um, provide transportation for students attending specialized programs. And um, it's, over, I think it's close to 60% said that they would be, that they would approve that. Uh, Director Hockert. Sorry, um, my question goes back to the original slide. So we, we've gone through all the little red um, suggested items and now the immersion one comes under the black as in the community or the administration it doesn't align with those goals so my question is just why like where those were some priorities brought up in our last work session by some board members and so we are um, asking you if there's consensus to have those tested on the survey we did not want to dismiss um, some of the priorities that that some school board members did have Got it. Okay, so it's just that it doesn't, it wasn't something that the administration had brought up. As yes, and it, it wasn't in the original community survey in 2019. Um, and then it wasn't part of the administrative priorities, but it was part of school board members um, priorities when we had the last work session. Okay. Director Porbeni. Thank you. And um... Thanks to Director Hackett for, for that question. Melinda, thanks for explaining that. So I just, you know, because we have our, we have members of our community watching right now. We have our students watching as well. We have staff and administration watching. Um, so I think it's important for us to provide clarity. So one, it wasn't in the 2019 um, uh, survey. Two, um, it wasn't something that the administration actually wanted, talked about or said should be a part of it. But this was something that the board, previous board, actually wanted to, to be a part of, right? So, you know, well, it was actually brought up as well in our last work session. Yes, the work, last work session. Board, and we did invite new members if they could attend um, okay. that work session as well for input. Okay, so um, thanks for, for the class. So that's what I wanted to know. Do you know why the previous board wanted this to be a part of it? Because, I mean, I think it's important to provide clarity to those that are watching us right now. as We have transparent discussions as to all of these different um, inclusions that we're uh, trying to include in the survey. So what exactly was the reason why they wanted this particular one to be a part of it? Yeah, I can't speak specifically um, for why an individual board member, but it's for a lot of the reasons that were just mentioned earlier. Um, the transportation, the expansion or growth, um, bringing in new students uh, from inside and outside of our district. It's a high interest. 
And I'll let, I, I know there's a couple of questions or comments and, and um, Chair Petrie, I'll let you ask for that. Um, well, I'll, I'll just uh, call on uh, Director Riley right now. Do you have a question? Uh, more of a comment to um, Director Perbeni. Um, so initially when the original survey had gone out, it was supposed to be a board driven survey um, and working also with administration. Um, the chair at that time had had to had put together a list of questions that they wanted to see on the survey and the administration never entertained those and they did not get put in the survey. Um, as far as, you know, it might not have been that administration's goal or that administration's um, idea of what they wanted to move forward. However, since then we have had a continual loss and these things should have been addressed by the prior administration and they were not. But we have a continual loss of students um, in this district to other competitive um, arenas, whether it's, you know, private or charter or, or what have you. And we need to do something to attract students to us. And we need to be, you know, academically rigorous to provide um, experiences that they can't find anywhere else. And so that is the need to explore into these other options is to, is to actually regain our, our funding um, in, this, in this arena. So that's what I have to offer. I don't know if Director Weisberg has anything to offer or add to that. Director Weisberg. Thank you, I'll try to be very quick. And uh, thank you, Tina, that is exactly what I was gonna say. I was just gonna add that um, the Spanish immersion program started off and, and it added a grade, it adds a grade every year. There might be a lot of, of students in the district that are not in the Lake Elmo area that would love to go to that program. If we expanded the program, we would allow that to happen. And just like Tina said, we could attract more students to our district. We lost, I think, 230 students this year, and we need to do everything we can to get as many students um, as possible to come to our district. And a Spanish immersion is a very popular alternative, which nobody else in our area offers. And expanding that program to me is a win-win. Thank you. Director Ankin. <clears throat> I think, you know, an expansion certainly does sound positive. I don't think there's any, any doubt about that. Uh, the question becomes this, you know, does the, the expense that it's going to cost, is that, is that going to be recouped? You know, are we going to, I suppose if we're, we're talking business speak here, the business speak is you have to spend money to make money. Uh, the question becomes, though, is, is the expense going to, you know, bring enough students back so that we get enough revenue back to do that? And I, I, I have my doubts. I, I don't know. I am not, you know, obviously can't tell the future, um, but, but that certainly would be a concern. You know, if you, if you move this program to a different building, now you have more staffing needs. If you take a look at the next one down there, uh, talking about looking at um, uh, magnet schools, same thing, you know, you're, you're looking at more staffing. And so do, do the, um, I don't want to say do the costs outweigh the benefits, do the benefits outweigh the cost, but I think that's kind of where we need to be looking at this. And from a financial standpoint, I would be curious to know if, if that really is, is thought that we, we could recoup enough uh, for that to make, to make sense. And, and uh, Director Onken, our goal would be to see if there's consensus from the board to test this item. And if then it's tested and there's interest from the community, that's when we would put all of the costs, um, the impact to the taxpayers, and then bring it back to the board for a decision to see if we're going to support that or not. Director Sherman. For me, I guess, I don't think it ever hurts to have more information. Um, I just, I don't think as a board, we know enough about the dual immersion program. It's, I think that it's in third grade right now. Um, how is it doing? How are, are our parents happy? I just feel like as a board, what do, is it something that we want to continue? Do we have kind of achievement benchmarks? I know third grade might be when we start getting some of those things, but I guess from my standpoint, I don't, I don't, I 
I like getting more information. I'm just not sold that we know enough about where the program is today to know where we want to take it in the future. And certainly there's people here. I know I would love to speak to Principal Gordy about his thoughts on what's working, what's not working, you know, kind of his vision and where he sees it, if it's going to mature to the next level. Um, so I guess I, to me, there's just a lot more unknowns and a lot more decisions that would need to be thought through both from a business standpoint and from a student benefit standpoint that I just, I don't wanna be going out on something implying that it's gonna be on the next levy when it just, I don't know that we're there yet to go I'll, that soon. The goal of tonight is just to see if there's some consensus to test this, mm -hmm. um, to see if there's any community support and then we would go into all of the details. Right. All of your questions, yep. Okay. Uh, Director Riley. Yeah, I would just like to reiterate, you know, what Melinda had had said. This isn't, you know, we're doing this today or we're doing this tomorrow. This is, we're testing to see what the community's interests are. And if we never do that, we never know what the community is interested in. And we want to be an institution that is of the community and, and is the community's ideas and, and something they desire. So I think it's very, very important to put the questions to the community to gather the information so we know how to move forward. Uh, Director Parvani. Um, thank you very much. Melinda, I really appreciate, you know, just the kind of focusing it on uh, board consensus tonight. Uh, one thing I wanted to say was, um, it strategically, um, what other ways can we use to attract students to the district? Because we're not, we don't even know if other students from other districts will want to come to Stillwater schools. Um, I think personally, uh, growth instead of expansion would have been a better idea because at least we have a benchmark, uh, like Director Sherman said, we'll have a benchmark in terms of what we're doing. Uh, when you expand without having an outcome as to where we are, specifically if there's any value to it, that you want to expand. I mean, it's like expansion requires uh, Director Onkin made statements like, you know, there's cost to it. We're talking about bossing. Uh, but one thing we're not talking about also is disenfranchising uh, native speakers who live in the Likelmo area. Uh, so when you pull something out of a space, you might gain um, you might gain kids from other areas, but you would lose the native speakers from that specific area. There's a cultural component to that that we're not looking at. And I think that's an important factor as well. So instead of expanding, what exactly are we doing with the growth process? What are the outcomes? What are those benchmarks? And we done anything with that. And I think if we look specifically into those areas before we start speaking about expansion, uh, then maybe in a couple of years, if we see results, then we, we will know then, I mean, we'll have some conscious uh, critical thinking processes where there's some results for us to make decisions. On. So uh, right now, I don't, personal, this is my personal opinion. I don't know if that's the most important thing. Yeah, um, one option we've seen uh, across our state, a loss of students um, for other options um, during this pandemic, including our district. and and surveying um, families we do know um, and, and connecting with other districts that there's a high interest in an online option, um, possibly attracting students from outside. And we also know that there are other dual immersion or um, Spanish uh, language programs within other districts that have grown theirs and we could bring that information to if this is tested um, to provide as much information as possible on the costs. and and um, did they draw in um, open enrollment, alternative enrollment, et cetera. Director Riley. Thank you. Um, we've seen a loss with our other community adversaries um, before the pandemic. We, you know, we have a loss to Montemita, we have a loss to St. Croix Prep, we have a loss to St. Croix Catholic. We have a loss to charters. Uh, that, that's revenue for us. I think we could do, do things a little differently to, to bring those kids back into our, our buildings. Um, I want to ask you, where is the harm? What harm is being done in asking the community their thoughts? 
So you want to just say, no, I'm done. I'm not interested and move it, move beyond without putting a pulse on the community. I think that is where we get our most valuable information of becoming an institution that is the community. And that's what we want. We want something that is going to be a, a, a place that everybody wants to land. And so I think it is imperative that we put these questions out to the community to understand things that they would like to see. That hasn't happened. That has not happened so far. Director Sherman. I guess for, in, for me, I don't disagree with what Director Riley is saying that we need to have the community gauge what the community is interested in. But I guess I, I fail to recognize why we're only asking about Spanish immersion. Um, the, the program at Lake Elmo was designed to serve specifically an underserved constituent in our community. And I don't wanna lose sight of that. Um, I mean, who is to say that the community doesn't support a science magnet or in, and we're asking about a Spanish magnet or a, I just don't want to limit, if we're, gonna, if we're looking for purely information on what would drive the community's interest, I don't think we should be coming to them with, are you interested in Spanish? It should be truly, what are you interested in? And to see if we can gather some kind of input. I think that's where I'm at. Director Ankin. So can the, can the, in the, in the essence of what uh, Allison was just saying, you know, can we change the question? Um, if we can't change the question, I, I think we're kind of getting to a point where we're talking circularly here now, and we just probably just need to, to vote on it. But I guess to ask my question, can we change the question, make it more open-ended? We could work with Don Lifto on that to see if we can, um, be as specific, but collect as much information as possible um, on that. We, we have 40 questions and that's why we need to, you know, prioritize what we're asking, um, but we could check in with, with um, Dawn. Um, so before I call on anyone else, I just wanted to ask um, uh, Superintendent Lansfeld how much more we have, because it does seem as though we're, we're going over some of the same ground. And um, I just wanted to know how much more um, information you're going to need to give to us. It's now, we've now spent about an hour. We need to keep moving. We have a calendar okay. Um, okay. Uh, um, adjustment possibility that we also need to review and I need to get through the bond information. Okay. Um, and we'll see if we can come to the consensus. So if anybody's really desperate to say something now that they haven't said yet and hasn't been, it hasn't come up, I'll call on you. Director Riley. I just wanted to say that I don't think we were limiting it to one thing or just the magnet or just the immersion school. Um, when I was making my references, it had to deal with um, Director Hockert and the fact that she brought up the blackened um, lettering versus the red lettering. So I am absolutely in agreement that it should be it should be much more open than specialized. Okay, with that, could we have a thumbs up vote um, if you're in favor of a question on the survey regarding the immersion program? Okay. Joan, did you get that? I have two and a maybe. Well, I thought we just said maybe open-ended and to me immersion says specific. So I, are you giving two options, one on immersion and then one a more open-ended well what we can do that if, okay. it, if everybody's okay with that okay so Joan we have the immersion um a thumbs up if you would like something more open-ended than immersion on the survey now we have five six for an open okay um, last question, um, would you like the, uh, there to be a question about a possible magnet um, school on the survey? Director Ankin, question. Yeah, I, I think if we're having an open-ended question on there about asking people what they would like to see, I think that covers that. I, I know when people hear magnets, they, they might think more specifically, but I feel if we're having an open-ended question, I'm not sure this one is needed. Okay. 
Carissa? Carissa. I apologize. Um, just for some clarity, when you say open-ended, are we asking a, a wider question about the type of magnet schools they're looking for? Or are we truly just asking an open-ended question of what would you like to see us offer? They're very different. And I just want to make sure I'm understanding so I have direction to give to um, Baker Tilly. Uh, Georgia Perbaney. I think for me, it will be, what would you like to see offered, but not specific, not give, uh, because I know a lot of people will want another gift, a gift, um, gifted program, you know, an expansion of the gifted program somewhere else, you know, so let's leave it open. Uh, if we're going to have any kind of open, let it open, but not be specific as to Spanish immersion, gifted programs, or magnet school. Uh, let's just leave it open. Let people decide. Um, I do have a question about that, Carissa. Do you know what sort of a survey this is going to be? I mean, some of them um, tend to be not open-ended and just um, multiple choice or whatever. So do we even have the ability in this particular type of survey to make changes and make it be open-ended? If I remember correctly, we have the ability to do one or two open-ended questions. One of those I know is already um, in our conversations probably going to be tied to a tax impact kind of question. Um, so we might have the flexibility and I can certainly work with them, but I do believe we were limited to just two open-ended and everything else is a response. Okay, all right, Director Riley. Thank you. Um, I don't think you can have it too open-ended. I think you can, you can give some options because that would just put everything all over the place. I mean, as far as a magnet school goes, that is very different. I think than talking about an expansion of gate, you're talking about what a magnet school is, what kind of a magnet school is what I could see being asked, whether it's, you know, an, an extension of elementary pathways, whether it's a science academy, whether it's a math, you know, in that realm, I think it needs to be a little bit more specialized in that we give options, um, but not completely open-ended because you'll never come to any conclusion that way, in my opinion. Yeah, and I believe this survey is just to find interest if the community is willing to support that. And then the next survey will go into details of what the community would actually want. Director Probini. I'm not gonna take your time, thank you. Why, why do we need a magnet program? So I don't think there's clarity as to why magnet program. Uh, Director Riley. I think I spoke to this earlier already today in, in reference to drawing in um, more students into our district to grow our enrollment. I think we need to do something that isn't being offered in any other um, format with any of our neighboring, our neighboring uh, competition. And I think if we could find some sort of a magnet and we actually have a fantastic person on staff who did this in their past, um, their, their past employment. So it's not that we don't have the experience and the ability to get this up and do a, a great, fantastic job at it. I think we have resources at our fingers. We have buildings, we have the ability to do something fantastic for this community. And I think we should take the opportunity to do that, do that to, to grow our, our, um, in, our enrollment in our student population. Director Weisberg. Thank you. I agree. And um, I think we're getting lost in, per in thinking that we are making decisions right now is what we're gonna spend money on. And all we're doing is asking the community what are you interested in? What would you be willing to spend more money to do for this district? And if we continue to lose 200 students a year, that's $2 million that we cannot spend on the students that we have. If we can think of innovative ways or programming to attract more students to our district, that's more money we'll have to spend on all the students, period. And I understand the cost benefit analysis. If we get the survey back, and there's no interest in a magnet, then we don't go that way. If we get the survey back and there's no interest in expanding immersion, we don't go that way. That's what these questions are for, is so we know which way to go. Thank you. And, and I'll just add um, Hazel Reinhardt, um, a demographer. She did a presentation um, earlier this year for our district. And uh, um, there was a question about magnet schools and she provided some great information on that. And it has to be, 
um, the right type of magnet school, back to Director Onkin's um, uh, comment, to bring in that money. It, and so that, not tonight, we're up here tonight, but if it was decided, then we would have to go deep into the weeds to bring that information back to see if it would bring in money, be cost neutral or be at a cost loss. But I would encourage people to watch Hazel's um, presentation if you haven't. Uh, Director Sherman. I don't, I don't know how, because I don't want to hold up the presentation and I don't know what the end is to this. And I feel like maybe we need a little bit more direction from the people doing the survey and also input from our administration. But I guess my point is I want the information, but I don't want to lead people to it has to be emergent or it has to be a magnet when what if they come back and say, we really want um, this X, Y or Z in our already school. You know, what if we, we, we want additional program, but we don't want to leave our school. We want to have something, you know, we want gate or something in every school, or I don't even know what the ideas would be, but I want the information. I want to know what drives. That's always a good idea to know what your customers want. Um, but I just don't want to tell them what we think they want when we as a board and as an administration haven't really fully vetted any ideas yet. Um, I think that it's just moving a little too fast for me. So if we can't keep it vague or open-ended, then maybe we, you come, the superintendent could come back to us and say, these are his concerns, the surveyor's concerns, but I support more of an open-ended, tell us what you want question. Superintendent, did you have something? Yes, I just wondered if we could take a consensus on um, working, the district working with Don Lifto. I know he's watching tonight. Um, to develop a, a question that would best um, uh, survey the community uh, about a specialized program um, within a school or, or, or a magnet school. Can we do a thumbs up on that possibly? Okay, let's see if there's, go ahead and if you're in support of that. Tell me what you, tell me what it was again, I'm sorry. We work with Don Lifto um, with this information between the immersion and magnet school question to come up with a survey question um, to ask the community what their interest would be in some type of a specialty school. And then we would have a comeback, we would have a chance to come back and to vote on that, what the question is. Yeah, well, Correct. he would work with us to come up with an appropriate question um, after he takes in all of this information and Chris and I could work with him. So but the question, sorry. Um, coming, sorry, yes, uh, Director Perini. Okay, so, but the question is, are we coming back to vote on it? Because we're not voting for the question tonight. Are we coming no, back? We, correct, we just want to provide a question on the survey that we would work with, with Don Lifto on that would keep it more open-ended to see the community interest in a possible um, magnet school or, you know, an open-ended question. Chris? So that's, that's my problem is the specifics, uh, because I think there's a lot of assumptions as to what can bring kids back to the uh, district. Um, so the specifics in terms of whether it's immersion, whether it's magnets, to me, it's too specific. Uh, we don't have any, uh, we don't have any data that shows that, you know, um, this was what was needed. Are we asking the right question? Why did we just speak immersion? Why did we just speak I know we're not trying to have any answers here today, but it's just too specific for me. How did we make those assumptions that these are the two areas that will attract students? Um, have we asked ourselves, why are we losing students? Uh, we haven't asked ourselves that question. Why are we losing students? Uh, we've been losing students. There's a reason why, uh, but we don't even know the answers to that, but we're assuming that a magnet or an expansion of an immersion program will help bring students back. We don't know that. There's no data to show that those are the two things. There might be a couple of other things that we're not talking about. Uh, and I, I think it's really been, it's really focusing on what the real issues are as to why we're losing students. I don't think we're there yet. And until we ask those questions, then we can start looking for solutions because specifically identifying magnets and immersion you have given a solution without having the information to back that up. So there's no facts that those are the things that will bring students back. I don't think that's, um, so you've already given a solution there, but we don't know why. Why are we losing students from our district? And I think that's where we need to focus on the why first before we now start talking about, oh, maybe an immersion, 
maybe uh, uh, Gates, maybe um, having a charter school, but we're not there yet because uh, we, we have to look at the other reasons to why we're losing students. Uh, Dr. Weisberg. I'm sorry, I disagree. We're not giving somebody a solution. We are asking somebody a question. And just when, when Director Sherman basically said the same thing, we're not telling anybody anything. We are asking, are you interested in this? That's the whole point of a survey. Are you interested in exp uh, lower class sizes? Are you interested? We, we don't know if we don't ask. We are not telling somebody how to vote. We are saying these are the options. If you could spend your money on this, would you do it? It's not providing a solution and it's not telling anybody what to do. It is asking a question. Um, I do think we need to move on with this so that we have time to talk about other items. And it se certainly seems to me that everybody has a strong opinion about this and has had an opportunity to, um, to voice it at least once. So I will call on Director Riley and unless someone has something very different to add, I think we should move on after that. Director Riley. I also disagree. I, I think this is asking the community what they want. I want you to ask yourselves, why are you so reluctant to ask the community what they want? What are you afraid of hearing? I don't understand how this conversation has taken the path it has when it is simply a question asking the interest. That, that to me, I'm, I'm literally baffled tonight. I am literally. I think we need to, uh, are we going to vote on, are we gonna do the thumbs up now, Melinda? Is that but, what you yeah, want to do on this question? Yeah, see if there's consensus on asking a question um, regarding possible um, magnet school or immersion. We'll work with Don Lifto on formatting that question. Just thumbs up for right now. So we can, let's see, Joan, do you have a count? I have three thumbs up. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's go on to the next um, slide. I'll have you pull that up, Carissa. Okay, thank you. Our next section is um, about bonds and our priorities there. Again, bond is for building. We do know that we have some um, space issues coming up, specifically on the south end of our district uh, with Brookview Elementary, Lake Elmo Elementary, and Oakland Middle School. So our bond considerations, we need to address space needs within the district. There's overcrowding in several schools that I just mentioned and projected growth in the cities of Lake Elmo and Woodbury. We also need to address facility improvements identified by the community design team. Okay, the community design team met last spring and they came up with a lot of um, facility priorities. Um, we cannot address every single priority. I believe it came up to hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, but we looked at that and took the top priorities. Those are outlined in the red box. Uh, those priorities were to rebuild Lake Elmo Elementary expand Brookview Elementary, utilize Oak Park as a multi-purpose center. This year it has been used for uh, the 18 through 21 transition program and for online distance teachers to house out of. Uh, we also uh, have a priority of remodeling Stonebridge Elementary. It was built, I believe back in the seventies. It was an open concept and a lot of the staff have started to put walls around some of those spaces um, on their own and to sell withdraw and central services building. So those were the top priorities of this, the community design team. Okay, so with the October 2019 survey by Morris Leatherman regarding the tax increase for projects, Again, strong support for the dark green, light, support, uh, light green is support. When you combine those, uh, we had a lot of support for renovating older buildings, ensuring um, comparable facilities, which is again, goes back to equity for all students with their learning environments, expanding existing uh, schools. A lot of talk about the need for Brookview to expand, as well as construction of a new school. And it is noted when it was presented by Morris Leatherman 
that even though it was 37, 39% um, for support for the construction of a new school, uh, the firm said that if you really provide the information and educate the community on why we need that, they felt that we could have strong support uh, for that. Okay, also within that um, same survey, we asked the community, does the district have enough space to accommodate areas with enrollment growth five years from now? 56% said no, 27% were unsure, 17% said yes. So a combination of 83% of the community members surveyed um, were unsure or thought no, we did not have enough space for the growth within the next five years. So we come to the next administrative priorities um, based on that information and the community design team priorities. They um, have the priority of expanding Brookview. That would be an extra eight classrooms. Replace Lake Elmo. They've done a lot of work. We've been working with Krauss um, Anderson and uh, one school will be approximately 750 students. At the time they were looking at two smaller schools but the cost and inflation, it's astronomical. It's so much more efficient um, at that size, White Bear, um, like they are uh, building that size of a school right now and we could provide information on that. And also space to house specialized programs. We know that we want a, a better space for our transitions. Our ALC is currently at the high school and um, online academy for those families that want that choice for their children. Other considerations, we need more room for the growth at Oakland Middle School and increase in safety with school buildings. We know that's very important to our family members. Uh, the high school main entrance was improved a few years back when we went through all the schools and secured all of the vestibules. And we do know that the high school entrance could be a lot um, better. That's been talked about for a number of years. And then other district-wide safety improvements, such as um, extra security cameras, improvements to the door entrances and, and further expansion of that. Um, expand early childhood and preschool spaces to meet the demand. Uh, this would be specifically to ensure that there's at least two classrooms of preschool at every elementary school. And we know it's tight for Brookview Elementary and Lake Elmo Elementary. Preschool programs are great for kids. It's, it gives them the best start possible. We know that there's a demand for it and um, it's a high retention for our district. Those students that start in our preschool programs usually stay within our district. We also know that there has been a lot of um, talk or need for construction of a new high school auditorium and they have been talking about that since probably 20, 25 years ago when the high school was built. Uh, they have wanted to expand the auditorium and then modernize classrooms to create more flexible learning experiences. So with that, we would like to um, discuss this with the board, come to a consensus, thumbs up agreement on what to test on our survey. So consider the priorities of the community and the administration. Where is their agreement? What if any um, additional priorities can the board reach consensus on testing? The items in the left box in red align with the community and the administrative um, priorities. And then we had other administrative priorities that uh, we thought were important. So board member ideas, we have the um, Brookview expansion, Lake Elmo replacement and preschool space. That was mentioned during the last work session. And our administrative team also wanted um, to test space for specialized programs, which would be the ALC, the transitions, um, Oakland expansion, safety enhancements, a possible expansion or um, rebuild of the high school auditorium and modernized classrooms within their environment that could be flexible um, uh, equipment, desks, chairs, et cetera. Okay, with that, Carissa, could we go down those items, if you can take that down? So the first, if you um, agree with moving forward, the testing of the Brookview expansion, please provide a thumbs up. Okay, Joan, did you get a count? 
Six to one. Okay. The Lake Elmo replacement. If you would like that tested, please provide a thumbs up. I have seven oh. Thank you. Um, to ensure preschool space at all of our elementary schools, if you would like that tested, please provide a thumbs up. Can I, can I just ask a question about this? I'm a little unclear about what this actually means. Um, what about buildings that are already a little tight? How would you expand preschool space within buildings that are already a little crowded? That would be a possible expansion. That would be uh, in the future, maybe even a boundary change. Um, there's um, Director Drummerhausen, I'll let you ex explain or expand on that. I think the, the thought came up in the last couple work sessions and board meetings to talk about preschool and ways to expand it. And this piece right here is really looking at the spot where there are um, waiting lists and, and, and need where all families can't get in, more specifically Brookview and Lake Elmo. So as we look to possibly expand Brookview or um, build a, a, a new Lake Elmo, providing that additional preschool space within those um, new projects is kind of where that, that lies. Okay, thank you. Okay, so could we provide a thumbs up if you support um, the testing of insured preschool space? I have six one. Okay, next item. Um, if you uh, are in support of space for specialized programs, which would be uh, the transition program, ALC and other specialized programs, please provide a thumbs up if you'd like that tested. Joan? Yep, 7-0. Okay, the expansion of Oakland Middle School for growth needs. Please provide a thumbs up if you support that. Five to two. Okay, safety enhancements at our schools um, with an emphasis on the high school entrance, if you would like that tested. Uh, six, six to one. Okay, the early childhood family center and um, Preschool, you would like that tested? You already did that one, Melinda. I think we already tested that with the yep. preschool space, so we'll move on. So the high school um, auditorium expansion, if you're in support of having that tested, please provide a thumbs up. Five, two. And the last one, um, uh, the support for testing uh, the uh, uh, modernization of classrooms, which would be a lot of the furniture and other equipment needed for flexible learning. If you'd like that tested, please provide a thumbs up. Three, oh, Katie. Okay. So Did you have technology a- or would technology be separate? Technology. That would be the tech levy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would just be completely separate. So this is just purely like furniture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was a clarification I wanted to have as well. It's not just furniture, it's technology and, and all that. Technology would be on the tech levy, which we okay. put, um, we had consensus on that with the, the levy section. Um, the furniture, some of the furniture that we do have, I know years ago it was over $5,000 just to put some desks and chairs per classroom. It's very expensive and some of the schools still have furniture that um, was probably there when I was in elementary school. It's very expensive to replace and a lot of the um, classrooms, if you look, have grants and, and um, other funding opportunities. Uh, it's not just desks and chairs or a lot of stools, the stand up learning stations. It's a lot of flexible, but it comes at a high cost for all students. Um, Georgia Riley. I think we have to remember the survey that Liz was referencing earlier on in the appetite. And I think it needs to be brought back to everybody's attention that the community doesn't have an appetite for a big bond with open buildings. And, and the fact that you won't even pull the community to see their interest in learning and programs and you want to spend it on furniture, it feels a little off to me. Um, I don't think that we're actually wanting to spend money on it. We're just wanting to find out if this is a specific item that the community wants to. Right, but you won't find out if the community wants educational opportunities. 
Great. Um, Director Weisberg. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just going to say the same thing. I mean, buildings, brand new shiny buildings don't attract more students. Innovative programming does and providing something that other schools can't provide. And so I, I'm just at a loss why everybody's willing to say, oh, let's spend money on making everything new and shiny instead of what are we doing to actually attract families? And you won't even ask the question. This board just voted no, the majority just voted no to even asking the community what they want. I'm, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. Director Probeni. Uh, thank you, um, Chair Petrie. Well, I think we all want what's best for our students. We also want what's, what's best for our community. Uh, I'm sure nobody here has um, an special interest. Um, but I think it's also important that we are uh, extremely strategic in terms of how we respond to some of these issues instead of making assumptions. Um, when we talk about programs, there are all the types of programs that we could have thrown on the table that the board could have actually come up with, apart from immersion, apart from um, um, the other uh, magnet school that we talked about. They could have come up with um, early childhood education. That's a program. You can have early childhood education in other places as well. That can attract families into our district because they have it, at, you know, apart from having it in one location, we can expand that. So there's so many other programs that could be beneficial. My concern was, why, where did we come with just those two? Why are we so specific about those two? Um, but we're also not looking at the pulse. We're not taking the pulse of the community as to why are we losing students? The, the programs are great, don't get me wrong. Immersion is great. Um, I'm sure the magnet program, I don't know much about why we wanna have a magnet program, but I'm sure if given more information, there might be some value to that. Um, but my concern is, why are we losing students? I don't think we've answered that yet, but we're making assumptions that if we put these two programs, we will attract. And if we don't provide the necessary space or the facilities uh, for us to have this so-called attraction, and then we want to attract people into a space that it will be using old antique furniture. I'm not saying antique is bad, uh, but at least we should look at it from a different perspective because we're not, we're not talking about attracting students. So, so does that mean our students should be using uh, furniture that is old, a cake, um, have our schools look like they're from the 20s. Um, I think it's, you know, I don't know how this relates to attraction of students. Uh, I'm just concerned that, um, that we're talking about something that is completely not related. I, I don't think it's, it's unfair. I don't think um, it's wrong for us to provide our teachers and our students with the right space for them to be able to function. Attracting students, is not enough for us to have the quality of mind when it comes to education. Students must be able to function in a space that gives them the ability for them to think, for them to dream. How do you prepare that space? We all wanna have beautiful homes. So how do you prepare that space for your students to be able to do that? Um, I mean, this is, um, this is something that I think it's important for us to consider when we talk about correlations, because there's no correlation here. Thank you. Um, Director Sherman. I actually had it on my list if there was time to go back to that question that didn't pass. And I guess I would like to see, I thought we were getting to some consensus with that question um, that we wanted to. And I think what we're all saying is the same thing. It's just that the question that was then put to us went back to magnet and immersion. And I think we all want to pull the community, understand what the community wants and try within the best our, of our ability to provide that in the most equitable fashion for all students. So I would like to go back to that question if there's time at the end of the meeting, instead of it kind of going at each other, let's look where we had consensus. And I think that if we can keep that question more open-ended, and not limit it to immersion and magnet. I think we all want that same thing. We wanna know what our community wants. Um, and in addition, I think we're coming to some realization here that maybe we need some better information on um, polling families that opt into other school choice options and why they do that, because I think that's gonna provide us again with more information. And I know I'm digressing, but if we're gonna keep going back to it and attacking other, I just want to get back to the consensus I thought was there. I really did do think we all want the same thing. We want to know what the community wants. We just have to ask it in the right way, 
without in, a, in that in a leading way. Carissa. I was just going to offer that based on the conversation you had earlier, I felt pretty comfortable going back to Don Lifto. And, and I think we have a general idea of having a more open-ended question, just trying to get some feedback from our community. So I feel like if that's the direction you want us to work on, we can definitely put something in the survey. And my understanding is that we would have a draft that we would then share with the board for you to actually see the question and respond to. So if you're comfortable with that, we can certainly move forward. I would re-vote on that and support that 100%. So the more information I was just, again, it was wanting the open-ended and not leading people to a certain solution to the best of our ability. Um, Director Riley. I think part of the, the, the conversation around the magnet is that we have open space to be able to fill that space. You wouldn't be putting them into space that wasn't there. Um, we have it. And, and we, we should capitalize on it. And, and to think that um, it is really, in my opinion, vain to think that it's about how the building looks to what is in the building as far as content. And it's about the relationships. It's about, it's about the nurturing. It's about the teaching and, and all of those things with those students, with those teachers, with that staff. And it's about a sense of community. It is not about a chair. Director Hackert. Um, I would have to disagree with that. Um, and the reality is that I think it's naive to expect that an experience of both teachers and students in an educational environment that doesn't fit their needs um, or is way outdated or frankly falling apart in some of our buildings doesn't have an impact on their learning because it absolutely does. And I, I kind of depart on this a little bit from Director Riley as well in seeing new programs as the way to attract um, new families because really our, our district has a wonderful reputation um, built on the educational foundations of this district and the academics that we have been building for generations quite frankly and um, in looking at the previous survey that we we saw the result of the last board meeting. Um, a lot of our support still is for our teachers and throwing a bunch of new programs or carrots to attract people who've already left is, is taking money in a different direction. And for me right now, I feel like we need to really shore up the foundations of our great institution that we have in our district. And in the reality of a pandemic year, where money is going to be an issue. Um, I think it's it, we really do need to focus our efforts on what are the foundational issues that we need to address to make sure that our basic needs and our learning environments are attractive to the families who are going to be visiting those facilities. Um, so we have um, already voted on these items or given indication to administration as to where we want to go. Um, what else do we need to discuss? Um, we're now um, uh, at 530. Um, and how much more time? I mean, we could, I mean, my point is this, we could keep discussing this for probably another two hours, but we've already given indication to the administration. So I guess I'd like to move on with the program at this point. Superintendent Lansfeld. Yes, um, I would just like to make sure, Joan, were we able to take a consensus with thumbs up with the modernizing of classrooms? I'm not sure we had a- No, we did not. Could we just have that one more time with a thumbs up if you support um, testing the community on uh, modernizing classrooms? I have five too. Okay, and then I would like to go back to the um, last question on providing an open um, question with programming uh, the, in regards to the immersion and um, magnet schools and work with Don Lifto to create an open question to survey the community on what they could possibly support. Could we have a thumbs up if you're in support of that? And not limited to immersion or magnet? Yeah. No, not limited, it would be okay. open. Okay, Joan, do you have a vote on that? I have 6-1. Okay, thank you. 
and great conversations. And we will be having more of these conversations in the future. Um, I'm excited to see uh, what data we, we have provided with that survey. Uh, so next steps, community survey by Baker Tilly and really enjoyed working with Don Lifto. Um, he keeps things moving. So drafting questions before the end of this month in January, survey to the community in February, and we'll be excited to bring back the results to the school board and community in March. Financial analysis with Ellers, uh, the firm, they will um, be taking that information. We can start to tie in more information for you regarding the tax impact and what that means for our referendum. And we will continue to work with John Hunick and Krauss Anderson on the possible um, bond projects that we might want to consider after we send out and complete this survey. Okay, and with that, that's the end of my presentation. Um, okay, any questions, um, further questions? Um, Director Sherman. I, I didn't have any problem with anything we voted on. I just wanted to make sure between, um, the, I think the CDT and then the Hazel Reinhardt study, we had different populations to plan for. And so I just wanna make sure that expanding Brookview and building a 750 Lake Elmo gives enough space for the growth we have in the South because just based on the numbers I'm looking at, Lake Elmo is today close to 700 kids. So I just wanna make sure that when we're going out for anything bond related that we're properly planning for the demographics that Hazel shared you know, maybe there's boundary changes in there or, or what's going on, but it doesn't seem like we're adding a lot of new space on. And right now, and I will let Director Drummer um, Housing comment and just say, right now we're just testing. We're up yeah. here. Um, we haven't decided anything about size of schools or, um, but right now we just want to see if there's community support. Um, for replacing Lake Elmo is there community support for the expansion of Brookview? And I will defer to Director Drummer Housing. Yeah, to, to your point, as we are taking that information, that is one piece. Also, you look at an, an online um, hub of some sort, if that's going to take some students and, and move them to an online version instead of being in classrooms, it's kind of taking that information. But it's really as we expand those eight rooms, as we make Lake Elmo currently, their capacity is 675, so it'd be um, up a little bit. And then trying to triangulate all that data to make sure that we do have enough space. So yes, that's we're starting the early phasing um, and, and planning of that, but that is on the forefront of our mind as we plan to finalize what that actually looks like. So we don't have specific answers right now, but that is um, something we're, we're using, that data we're using to plan. Um, Director Anken. I was just going to add to that too. I'm assuming we also need to take into consideration, well, actually, I'm sure you guys are taking into consideration that um, we probably have some lower numbers in some of our Northern buildings as well, uh, which, which is probably going to require um, redrawing some boundaries also uh, to make some space, or which would make some more space in some of our Southern schools. Correct. That, that is an option as well. Anyone else? Um, okay, did we have anything else that we needed to discuss in this work session then, Superintendent Lansfeld? Yes, we did. Um, we would like to review the option um, or possibility of changing the um, school board meetings to a different day of the week. Okay, and Director Onken, did you want to maybe provide some information on that for us? Um, I, th I think, uh, I mean, we can vote on it, but I, I guess it seems like it might be more of a conflict than it's worth. So I guess at this point, I would be willing to withdraw that request if we want to continue to have board meetings on Thursdays. Um, it, I, I personally, I would love to have them changed, uh, but it, it seems like it's maybe more work than it's going to be worth and trying to coordinate everybody unless somebody else has a different opinion on that. We looked at, uh, I guess just before I sign off here or shut my mic off, we looked at possibly Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Uh, Tuesday wasn't gonna work real well for Valley Access Channel uh, because they have city council meetings typically on Tuesdays. The best nights for them would have been a Monday or a Wednesday to change to. 
Um, however, it sounds like uh, 916 district has their board meetings on Wednesdays. So that doesn't really work very well for us as one of our members will need to be a part of that. Mondays would work. However, there are some holidays on Mondays. So I'm willing to withdraw it at this point, unless somebody else uh, is also in favor of uh, trying to make that change and I'll let somebody else speak. Anybody else, anybody have any preferences they would like to talk about? No? Okay. Um, so we will need to go into um, um, a formal meeting so that we can vote on the calendar um, because we will probably be meeting next week, I believe. And we'll need to get that calendar formalized so that we can um, uh, make our plans for next week. Um, so if no one has anything else that we need to discuss, we'll close this work session and then uh, it's 541. So at six o'clock, we'll be reconvening for a very short, hopefully, business meeting. Okay. Thank you. All right. all right. See you all in just a little bit.
sure you want to have people and put them in. So you're going to attract people in your private schools, in your child schools. Oh, I'm not afraid. It's gonna. It's not. I'm not sure. I'm afraid. To make sure. Oh, you're a terrible. This is the job. Thank you. It's going from private schools to charter school. But you want to put them building like, okay, I mean, the least we can do it. So I say this because in the Calma, the situation is quite unfortunate.
somebody's not muted, it might be Director Corbini, just for your information. <laughs> Thank you.
I think we're live. Um, so I will go ahead and call to order this special meeting of the School Board of In Independent School District 834 on January 12th, 2021. Joan, could you call the order, please? Director Ocker? Here. Director Aachen? Here. Director Porbeni? Here. Director Riley? Here. Director Sherman? Here. Here. Director Weisberg? Here. Chair Petrie? Here. Do you have a quorum? Thank you. Um, I now will entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, Director Riley? I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting agenda as provided. Thank you. Second? Director Sherman? Um, okay, Joan, can you call the roll again, please? Director Hackard? Yes. Director Akin? Yes. Director Porbeni? Yes. Director Riley? Yes. Director Sherman? Yes. Director Weisberg? Yes. And Chair Petrie? Yes. You have a 7 0 vote. Vote you, Thank Manus. you. Thank you. Um, we are going to talk for a minute now about the school board calendar for 2021. Um, we had had a request from one of our board members to consider changing it to a different night of the week um, because of some conflicts. And we did check into Tuesday nights, but that was not really a, a, a possibility because we need to have Valley Access Cable uh, record our meetings and Tuesday was not a good night. So then we looked at Mondays, we looked at Wednesdays. Um, Monday ended up being problematic because of some um, uh, holidays and, and various other things that would interfere with the schedule. And Wednesday had some conflicts as well. So it looks as though we are um, returning to the option of a Thursday meeting schedule. And I wonder if um, Carissa could put that calendar up on the screen so that we can all take a look at it. Um, so this is a calendar that calls for, I think the, this, the meetings in January are a little off because of um, some of the, uh, you know, I'm not exactly sure why they're off a little bit, but um, once we get into February, then we're meeting essentially on the second and fourth Thursdays of the month through the rest of the year. Um, so that is the proposal. Um, and I'm just, uh, we'll get to the action item in just a second, but I wonder if there is any discussion on this proposed calendar. Director Ankin. Have, will we decide tonight um, when we did uh, choose to go back to in-person meetings? We did not have that on our agenda tonight. Um, I guess my preference would be that if we um, want to have a discussion about that tonight, we can, um, and then perhaps we can put that on the agenda for um, a future meeting. Does anyone else have any comments or questions about this calendar? No. <laughs> um, okay, um, if there are no other comments or questions, then let's uh, move on to our action item. And that is the approval of the calendar um, uh, for meeting on Thursdays during this year. Would anyone like to make that motion? Director Riley. I'd like to make a motion to approve the 2021 school board calendar. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Director Weisbergs. Uh, it has been moved and seconded that we accept this calendar for 2021 meeting on the second and fourth Thursdays of the year, of the month. Um, Joan, can you take the roll call for us, please? Director Hocker? Yes. Director Ankin? Yes. Director Porbeni? Yes. Director Riley? Yes. Director Sherman? Yes. Director Weisberg? Chair Petrie? Yes. 
You have a seven oval. You vote unanimous. Great, wonderful. That was an amazingly short meeting. Thank you, everyone. Um, I adjourn this meeting and I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Thank you. <laughs>